Hello and welcome to the second part of the fifth recording in the Azure demo service. So we'll continue on from where we stopped in the last recording and cover how to configure um, Azure Virtual Machines post creation um, using Azure PowerShell DSC. So what we'll be doing in this case is we'll be installing IIS on the servers that were deployed earlier. So on these two servers. So now we have a load balancer configured to send traffic to them. We can reach them via NAT also. But we also want to ensure that this machine is set up as web servers. And to do that, we'll be using Azure PowerShell DSC for that. Um, let's go through the goals for today. Yeah, here we go. Let's scroll down. Go. So, <coughs> excuse me, implementing DSC. So, task number one, what we'll do is we'll install and configure HIS on Azure Virtual Machines by using Azure PowerShell DSC, and that's on the two VMs in our availability set. And then we'll test DSC configuration and virtual machine availability. Um, let's get right to that. So, the instruction, if you're following alongside with the manual, that we're following is this one here. So we just completed exercise one in the last recording. We're proceeding with exercise number two. So I'm currently still logged into my into my lab virtual machine here. And first thing that I'll do is I'll open PowerShell HIC. I'll run that as administrator. And we have a script that we're going to use. So if I click on file and open, and then in this case, go to my E volume on the lab files, on the lab 04 in this case, on the starter, and we'll find this script here called IRS install. And then if I open that, so as you can see, this is a normal PowerShell, I'm sorry, Azure DSC script, right? We've got the configuration, we've got configuration there, and the nodes that we're configuring and our configuration there. So it's the normal PowerShell DSC. Um, but what we're going to be doing is, I'll bring up another script here. Let's go on the file, open. In this case, I'll open this other script, which is deploy 5020533 DSC. This one, if I bring this up. So this is the script that we'll be using for, for that deployment. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a few things that it's going to do. We're going to log into our Azure account and we're going to select the Azure subscription and then we're going to start storing variables so variables like a storage account and the reason for that is the storage account is where we're going to upload our Azure DSC script to or Azure DSC module to and that's where our machine will download it from so that's why we're specifying the storage account and we're specifying information about the storage account so here we're saying um, get that storage account so there was a storage account if we go back to resource groups and under that there was a storage account that was created this one here as part of the script that we deployed earlier so that's where we're going to be storing our azure dsc module so the script that we're using here it's going to run through that and it's going to try to locate that storage account if it doesn't find it, it will try to create a new storage account and give it a random name. So that's what this part is. But if it does find that storage account, which it will, it's, it's essentially going to skip all these ones. Then we're going to retrieve the storage account key for that storage account. And specifically, so we'll get the storage account key and we'll put that in a variable. And again, so this one, it's understanding the SE. Just what look look out for um, when we do the Hangout series, where we actually go into the theory and we talk about um, we discuss module number four, and where we talk about Azure PowerShell DSE. So this is a default container um, that Azure PowerShell DSE can use to store the module. So that's what we're referencing here. And then we're going to publish our configuration into that container in our storage account but to be able to get access to our storage account we're going to reference our storage account key I, that's that's what we're going to use and then we'll end by 
essentially adding a configuration to our virtual machines to add a new extension, a new PowerShell, Azure PowerShell DSE extension to them. That's going to tell them where which SaaS token to use and where the DSE module has been uploaded to in the storage account, the URL, and then the configuration function itself. So they, they're going to be able to get that and that's um, the final configuration that we'll do. So what we'll do is let, let's start with the execution of the script. So I'll just go ahead and just run this. Um, I don't think there's any change that I need to make. I'll just go ahead and click run. It's going to ask me to log in. Um, so there may be something that we need to correct. I just remember now, but when we get there, we'll correct it. So my name, my email address. So I think there's something that we may need to correct. So here's one of the things that even though this um, was written by Microsoft Learning, they, they are still mistakes in them. So I think I spotted a mistake in these earlier. So we click run once there. So it's beginning to run the script. So we're looking at it and it's like, oh, what exactly is going on? If I go refresh, click on the that storage account, and then go on the blobs. And I can see that container there, the Windows PowerShell DSE container. If I click on that, you see that it uploaded this module to it. So that's some of the stuff that it's doing in the background for us. Let's just keep that running. The other thing that it's going to try to do, so that's for, for the module. And if I click on that module itself, I can see the URL myself. So that's the URL. So I know it's blurred out in this case, but that's the URL there. And I can see the MD5 of the content. If I go on the virtual machines, I have my VM0 and VM1. If I click on the VM0, for example, and then if I click on the extensions, I can see there's a new extension here that's been added. And the same if I click on the VM1 and then I click on the extensions, there's no extension yet for VM1, but we should see it very soon. So we can see that it's already deploying that for VM0 and it's in the transition in state. So that's what it's doing in the background. Um, is it's taking um, the module, uploaded it to the storage account. Also, one of the things, if you're familiar with um, PowerShell DSE itself is there's a reliance on the local configuration manager. It can use a push model, it can use a pull model. Um, also, one of, one of the things that happens is we do need to compile a configuration um, script into a MOF file. So if you remember, we do need to do that if we're using PowerShell DSE. But in this case, we don't need to compile that because what happens is um, Azure PowerShell will itself do that um, compilation for us so it's going to compile it for us um, so we we don't need to do that so it's going to compile it to a MOF file and then our local configuration manager service that's on our machines can go ahead and apply that so i think what i'll do is once let's go back here let's go back on the extension so it's still deploying and check extensions again so what i'll do is i'll pause this recording here and then once it's done, I'll come back and then we'll continue. So the provisioning completed successfully. And you can see um, the status code um, says successful. If I go back to my Azure portal, as you can see here, if I go on the VM1 on the extensions, I can see my DSC extension there and the provisioning succeeded. And if I click on the VM1 here, and if I go on the extensions, I can see provisioning succeeded here also. So uh, what that means, it's essentially just used partial DSE to install higher on both of these machines. 
If I wanted to, which is the next thing that I would do in this task, it will log into each machine. So what we'll do is if I go on the VM0, if I look at the public IP address, 1065, and if I go to VM1, and I look at its public IP address too, it should be exactly the same. And that's because they're both using the public IP address of the load balancer in front of them. So I want to connect to this machine and then connect to this machine using um, RDP. So I'll be using the same IP. So that's why the NAT configuration that we configured earlier comes into place. So let's bring that up. And I'll bring up remote desktop and then click on the remote desktop connection client put in my public IP there but do not forget we use different ports so port 33890 will take me to VM0 if I click on connect brings me here student is the um, Student is the username and the password. Let's get that from the file. So password is P it's in the document. <laughs> Just click OK to that. Don't ask me again, click yes. And while that's connecting, I'll connect to the same IP address. That's the password that we have there that I'm pasting. While this I'll get that IP address. Connect to that same IP address, but this time specify port 33891, which will take me to VM1 and click on connect. Get the password in the document and paste that. Click OK. Click Yes. And now I'm connected to both systems. Let's see the first one. So connected to this. What I just want to do is verify that HiS is installed. And this is me connecting to VM0 at the moment. So the way that I will know that IS is installed is if I look to the left here, I can see IS on the server manager. So that confirms to me that IS is in, indeed has indeed been installed by Azure PowerShell DSE on this machine. Um, what I can do is if I minimize this and go to the second one. And I can see HiS is also installed on that. So that's good. So the next thing that we want to do is we're just going to, because there's one, one thing that I need to bring up here. So um, you put in here in task number two, we need to enable HTTP to our load balance virtual machines by adding an inbound NSG rule. So what do we mean by that? What we mean by that is, these two machines currently only allow RDP inbound, but we're going to be receiving traffic on this on port 80 and then relaying it or load balancing it to the back end on port 80. So this network security group has to allow port 80 also. So that's what we'll be doing here. So I'll go back to my lab virtual machine, in this case, this one, go to Azure portal and then go on the resource groups select my resource group and then look for the network security group this one so there's only one if i select that what i can do is i can go on the inbound security rules and then i can click on hard and i'll say allow from any source um source part i'll leave there destination any destination port i'll change that to 80 protocol i'll change that to tcp action allow priority i'll change it to 1100 so it has a unique priority and for the name of the rule itself i'll call that allow http i'll leave the description empty and i'll go ahead and click ok So that will allow me to be able to connect to the load balancer um, to the virtual machines on port 80. And I'll go ahead and do that now. So once that's created, let's go back on the 
load balances get my load balancer public IP address which is this and then I'll go here HTTP I just need the public IP and I'll press enter to that and I can see I'm connected to this and I can click here refreshing that I'm connected to that what I can do is because I'm currently still logged into both machines via LDP is I can go on to one of them just to show you and if I go on the tools and bring up services and if I look for the service worldwide web publishing this one so the worldwide web publishing service I can right click and I can stop that so that service is currently stopped if I go back and if I refresh I'm still accessible to get to the web server however if I go to the second one and I do the same which if I go on the services and I go to stop this I shouldn't be able to access anymore so World Wide Web Publishing stop and that stopped if I go back and if I refresh this this time I can see that it's it's not finding that and eventually it's going to fail so that's because both backend instances have been stopped so but the service has been stopped so it won't be able to so if I go back here it says it cannot be reached but if I go back to these and just start one of them again and then go back give it a while it's gonna refresh itself so after doing the checks again it's gonna detect that it's LD again load balancer will start follow forwarding and there we go now I can reach it and I can go back to the other one and enable or start that service again so there we go, we've just used PowerShell DSC to automatically install IIS on both machines and we've tested our load balancer rules and our NAT rules also going through the load balancer. So I'll end this recording now. In the last recording in, in, as part of this group of the fifth recording, what I'll do is I'll show how to use storage spaces to configure uh, volumes and disks um, for an Azure virtual machine. So thanks very much for sticking with me up to this point and I'll see you in the next recording. Bye for now.